الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد <coughs> Proceeding with some of the athar of ahla athar قال مالك بن عنس رضي الله تعالى عنه ورحمه الله تعالى من لزم سنة وسلم منه أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم مات كان مع النبيين والصديقين وشهداء وصالحين وإن كان له تقصير في العمل مالك بن أنس رحمه الله تعالى he said whoever adheres to the sunnah and that the Companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, are safe from him, meaning safe from his his tongue, him speaking ill about them, like the Rafida and the Khawarij and other groups that spoke ill of the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. And then this person dies. They will be from the prophets, meaning in the in the hereafter. Siddiqeen, and the, the truthful ones, and the shuhada, the martyrs, and the salihin, the pious, even if they had shortcomings in their deeds. So this shows us the importance here of just adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, And even if you have shortcomings in your, in, in your deeds, that does not mean that you leave off deeds. It does not mean that your deeds and your good deeds are not important. They're incredibly important. And Allah has commanded with us all throughout the Quran, وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَةً and, and, and they do the righteous deeds. So, we must do righteous deeds and they have to be in accordance with the two conditions to have our deeds accepted. The first being ikhlas lillah and the second being mutabi'ah that the first being sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second being that the deeds are in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَقَالَ بَشِرْ إِبْنْ حَارِثْ الْإِسْلَامْ هُوَ سُنَّةً وَسُنَّةُ هِيَ الْإِسْلَامْ that Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah it is Islam. وَقَالَ فُذَيْلَ بِنْ عِيَادْ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إذا رأيت رجل من أهل السنة فكأنما أرى رجل من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا وإذا رأيت وإذا رأيت رجل من أهل البدع فكأنما أرى رجل من المنافقين فذيل ابن عياد رضي الله ت... uh, رحم الله تعالى he said that uh, he said, either ra'itu. So we need to correct that. Either ra'itu. He says, if I see a man from Ahl Sunnah, it is if I am seeing a, a man or a person from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if I see a man from the people of innovation, it is if I am seeing a person from the hypocrites. وَقَالَ يُونِسْ بِنْ عُبَيْدِ رَحِيمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى الْعَجِبْ مِنْ مَنْ يَدْعُو الْيَوْمِ إِلَى السُنَّةِ وَعَجِبْ مِنْهُ مَنْ يُدْعَى إِلَى السُنَّةِ فَيُقْبَلْ Yunus ibn Ubaid رَحِيمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He said, it is amazed it is amazing. Uh, or basically, you know, it is strange. It's amazing. The person in this time who calls it the sunnah. And look at this. This is the time of the salaf. This is a, the mutaqaddimin. This is, you know, over a thousand something years ago that they thought it was strange. Meaning the Ahl bidah had already uh, had intishar. They had already spread. He said, uh, you know, it is amazing, in the, basically in this day, in this day and age, uh, to find a person from the sunnah. And it is even stranger to find one who is called to the sunnah 
and they accept. Meaning they accept, they embrace Islam, uh, not only, or, or, or they're a Muslim, but they embrace the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They become from Ahl Hadith. They follow the Athar. They follow the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ with the understanding of the companions. This is their Madhab. This is their Minhaj. Not Ashari. Not Mu'tazila. Mu'tazila. Not uh, Karamiya. Not Khawarij. Not Qadariya. Not uh, Murjia. Not of any of the other sects and groups, but rather their understanding is in accordance uh, with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, in accordance with the uh, Ahla Athar and the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een Ahlu Sunnati Wal Jama'a Wa kana ibn Aoun yaqul indal mawt as sunnah as sunnah wa iyyakum wal bid'ah hatta mat Ibn Aoun rahimallahu ta'ala he said on his deathbed he 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 cried out as sunnah the sunnah and he said, and beware of bid'ah until he died. Qalit Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Mata rajul min ashabi, fara'i fil munam, faqal, kulu li, ab, uh, kulu li abi abdillah, alaykum bi, uh, alayka bi sunnah, Imam Ahmed, he had a dream. He, uh, uh, a man from his, his companions, meaning on his medhab or his students, uh, ha had passed. He died. And then he saw him in his dream. And he said, and he was saying to the people, and he addressed the people in, in the dream. He said, and say to uh, Abi Abdullah, say to Imam Ahmed, that it is upon you the sunnah. For verily the first thing that Allah asked me about was the sunnah. So again, this was a dream of Imam Ahmed. All of these narrations are just showing us the importance of following the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, in according to the madhab of the Salaf. And this goes back to what Imam al-Albani was saying about tarbiyah and tasfiyah. And that all of this, when we talk about the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, when we talk about ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah, it's muqayyid. Meaning it is restricted or it is defined and determined by what? By the minhaj of the Salaf. So it's not sufficient that you say, I follow the sunnah. Of course, if you really follow the sunnah, then you're going to be following the madhab of the salaf. So, but someone who just says, you know, I'm not restricted by the madhab of the salaf, or whatever the case may be. The point is, is that even the extreme Sufia, those who worship graves and worship the deads and worship their saints, they will recite ayat. And they will recite a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I'll tell you a real story. When I lived in Aden, in uh, I lived in this particular place where it was uh, a lot of Somalis there. And I used to pray in my local masjid because at this time I was doing some work there. And I only lived in this place for a temporary time. The Imam there, every after every he would, subhanallah, he'd give a, a, a lecture, and it was just it was very powerful because he you know. His hith was very strong and he would quote Hassan al-Basri a lot. So me, especially at that time, I just thought he was Salafi. I thought, you know, he, you know, and I remember a Talib al-Ilm who alerted me to know. And, and what I would see in that masjid, I would see a lot of bid'ah, meaning after every salat they would get up and it was like a dance they would do. They would all get up and they would, uh, uh, you know, someone would say al-Fatiha. They would yell like this, and then everyone would stand up, and they just start giving these salams, and it was almost like a dance. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa salli ala Muhammad Ali. Allahumma salli, and they would just go around and dance. Well, I understand, and this is true. And so that I thought, I, you know, I knew was very strange, 
But the Imam, the point being, is he was always qala Allah, qala Rasul, wa qala Salaf. But it turned out he was a Sufi. I don't know to the extent of his beliefs, what he believed, what he believed about the dead. I don't know about this, but they had a lot of bid'ah vahira there. And so this is why we say that it's muqayyid, it's restricted to the method of the Salaf. And how they understood ittiqad, you know, creed. And they understood uh, all the other aspects of the religion. That we go to them because when you unrestrict that and just say kitab wa sunnah. But you will find many of the people claiming this. And in fact, what they are practicing goes against the correct understanding of the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam al-Albani said, So the cause is that the effects of this dawah have not become apparent because it is new to this time in which we live. For this reason we find the situation to be the opposite of what Abdurrahman ibn Abi Layla reported about those companions who would be cautious of being asked questions and who would wish that someone else would be asked and the only reason that would make them answer a question would be because they knew that it was not allowed for them to hide knowledge. But in the depths of their hearts, they used to wish that someone else would bear that responsibility. So it shows the contrast between in our time and during the time of the Sahaba, they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feared making fatwa and feared answering questions. Whereas now the smallest guy will rush to lead up to the, to lead the Salat and rush to be in the to limelight, and rush to be the translator, and rush to sit next to the sheikh, and, and then, and you know, to, to be the one in the spotlight, not out of just wanting to be close to the sheikh, and rush to be the one to give fatawa, unlike the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'in. As for now, Imam al Abani says, in many Salafi gatherings, let alone non-Salafi ones, a person who it is assumed has more knowledge than other people present is asked a question. And all of a sudden you will see that so-and-so has started to speak even though he wasn't asked. And so-and-so has started to speak even though he wasn't asked. What makes these people do that? And then the imam answered that question. He said, it is the love of fame. It is self-centeredness. I am here. I have knowledge. MashaAllah about me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ahabatifillah, this is so powerful because... Imam al Albani is speaking about something that we've witnessed. I've seen it, I've seen it especially in, when I lived in Medina with certain individuals, may Allah forgive us and them, students of knowledge, that would rush to be in the limelight. They would rush to be, to, to put themselves forward. And this is a dangerous trait. Allah knows best what's in their heart. Maybe they rushed because they felt that they were the best qualified to do that. Or maybe they did it because they wanted to bring about good for the brothers. I don't know. But it's a dangerous thing when you rush to do that and it's for fame. And it's because you want everything to be centered on you. Or there is riya that the Prophet Sallallahu said uh, that the thing I am most fearful of my ummah is a riya. He mentioned a shirk al askar uh, and so letting us know to show off and to want your name out there and to be in the limelight can be a very dangerous thing. And we know the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the long hadith about the three on the day of judgment that will be raised up. And one of them is the person of knowledge. And Allah will say, وَمَا عَمَلْتُ فِيهَا قَالْ and that the man will say that I sought knowledge and I and I taught it, and I read, uh, you know, the Quran for your sake, you know, and I, I taught the Quran, and Allah will say, Kadab, you lied, but rather, uh, however you did it, to say that you were. Uh, an alam, or you did it so that you would be known as a qari. Uh, then this person, uh, because they wanted fame, they desired fame instead of this great 
you know, of being an alam and sharing that knowledge with the people and raising up the people in communities and being a, a, a qari, a, you know, someone who taught the Qur'an. خَيْرَكُمْ مِنْ تَعَلَّمُ الْقُرْآنِ وَعَلَّمُهُ The best of you is those who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. So instead of being of those who, who did that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person who does it for showing off, their end is in Jahannam. وَعِيَاذَ بِاللَّهِ May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm and nafia وَرِزْكٍ طَيْبًا وَعَمِلٍ مُتَقَبِّلٍ وَلَخْلَاسٍ وَالثَّبَاتِ عَلَى الصُّنَّةِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَ